Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. I have an unboxing for you and I'm going to color for you. I have free coloring pages, lots going on. So let's start with the two products we're going to unbox. I'm gonna show you those real quick to get you excited about what I'm going to do. First one, I'm going electric. <laughs> this is an electric pencil sharpener. I've been wanting to try one for a long time. I'm a fan of, fa of the manual ones. Will this one live up to what I want it to do? <gasps> That's what we're gonna find out. The other product we're unboxing today, the Van Gogh set of Castle Arts pencils. I'm really excited about this. I love Van Gogh. I'm going to link a video that we recently did where I colored a page inspired by Van Gogh's sunflowers. This set is going to be very interesting. It's supposed to be curated to some of his colors. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> so those are the two boxes, the two products we're going to be reviewing today, but let me show you some new coloring pages. The first one is one that we're going to have available free for a limited time to celebrate the holidays. I think I color drew this one two or three years ago. And I'm really excited about this one. It's a whole bunch of bells in a mandala shape. Lots of fun to color. And then I have a two more coloring pages that we're releasing into the premium library. This is the first one right here. This adorable little gnome couple in an ornament. So charming and cute. And the second one that we're going to actually color today with the Van Gogh pencils is this adorable sort of um, confused gnome. <laughs> <laughs> riding a reindeer backwards so that'll be really fun and charming to color as well so these two like i said are available in the premium library which if you want to support coloring bliss and keep us making these videos and new art for you it's just five bucks a month and you get access to over 700 coloring pages that's amazing plus a whole ton of resources so come on over to Coloring Bliss and check this out. But like I said, this one is free for a limited time for everyone. So at least come and get that one. All right, the first thing I wanna unbox is this boy right here. And the reason I wanna unbox him first is because I think he needs charging and I'm really excited that he is cordless, you guys. Battery operated. That was one of the things I was looking for when I was shopping for my first electric pencil sharpener. So let's take a look here. This one is by Office World. And I'll tell you the other things that made me um, pick it over some of the other models as we get into it here. So let's take a peek and see what's inside. We have one USB cable, so it's charged via USB. And one thing it doesn't come with is the little brick that goes into the wall. So you'll need a way to plug this USB into something. So it could be your laptop. I'm gonna be plugging it into a little um, adapter that I have right over here. Okay, here comes the actual pencil sharpener. This is what it looks like. So when I was shopping for one, um, I wanted one that the pencils went in the top, not the side, because I think it'll work better for my workflow. We're gonna find out. And the other thing I was looking for was battery operated so that I can move it around here in my studio all I wanted to. And I wanted it to have a helix type blade inside. And you can see that blade really good right there inside this device. Now it has some other features which I may or may not use. One is this dial which can dial to either a blunt tip with your sharpening or you can dial it to the sharp tip and most likely I think I'm going to be using primarily this one right here. Now I wanted to see how this comes up. Oh there is a little bit of power. That's good. Won't take as long to charge but it's flashing blue which I know that means it needs charging. So yeah Let's start by charging it and then we'll figure out how to use it after it's had a little time being plugged in. All right, I've got my pencil sharpener plugged in and while that's charging, let's look at these Castle Arts pencils. 
Now, I haven't looked at Castle Arts website in a long time, so when I did come over to take a look at their products that they have available, I was quite surprised at the um, amount of different collections they have and their new products. So that was pretty cool. And I want to make a comment here that I'm not sponsored by either company, either the pencil sharpener or this Castle Arts Company. Bought all these products with my own money and I'm not being paid by anybody. So you can trust my first impressions and whether as a consumer I'm happy or not with the products I'm getting. Okay, so. Castle Arts Van Gogh Collection, a color palette inspired by the works of Vincent Van Gogh. Um, then they have a little bit of history about Van Gogh back here and the actual piece, The Starry Night, and a few little examples of what colors you get in this set. It says that these are deluxe pencils, silky smooth velvet soft leads with a large crayon of permanent color with light fast qualities offering both translucency and opacity. And they are made in China. Okay, so let's take a look at what colors they have picked for me for my Vincent van Gogh obsession. Okay, there's the tin. Let me move that. Yeah, they smell like your basic Chinese pencils. I'm um, trying to see what's going on here. This got a little bumped in shipping, but it's okay. The pencils look intact. All right, so up here we have the swatches again with all the colors, the number, and the name. And let's take a quick peek at the pencils themselves. They have a black barrel, um, they're color dipped on the top. They say soft touch castle arts, the name of the color and a number. And as I was reading about the, the stats or the specs of these pencils, they have a 3.3 millimeter core. And I believe these are more of a waxy type formula, but I'm not sure, we'll find out here. They have a brand new line called the Gold line. And I think those are supposed to be more of an oil-based type pencil. And we have an upcoming video soon all about the Gold Line pencils. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss that review. They feel light like a Chinese pencil, but um, yeah, so far it's about what I expect for this price point. I paid $19.99 for this set. Um, but I was on their website today. Today is, let's see, December 14th. And on their website, they have this set on sale for only $9.99 right now. Pretty cool deal. <laughs> so I'll have links to both so you can check out where you want to buy them and how you want to get them. Okay, also in the tin, we get this cool leaflet here. And let's take, check this one out first. Oh, this is showing all their different products here. Oh, and all their colors. I'm seeing if they have the gold um, line here. They don't yet. So you can see here all the different colors that are available. So that was one of my questions is this is, are these pencils from their big line of color pencils? So if you have the big line, you already own them. Let's see. This one's called Mauve number 093. Let's see if I can find it. Yep. Mauve 093 it has a circle color pencil. So I think if you have their full set of their um, there, let's see, they call them the expert, I think. Is that what they're called? They're premium soft touch color pencils, is what they're calling them. Then I think you'll have all the Van Gogh colors. In the Van Gogh leaflet, we have some more information on Van Gogh and his art piece, The Starry Night. Here are all the other types of collections. They're curated collections that they offer, which is really fun. They have a bunch that are inspired by artists. So we have Cezanne, Botticelli, Monet, 
Kandinsky and Van Gogh. I hope I pronounced their names <laughs> at least relatively close to the right way. Then they have like themed type sets, the seascape, landscape, urban, botanical, and portrait. Yep, those are the ones I had. And then they have like a how to draw starry night. Ooh, that would be really fun to try. Oh, and they even tell you what colors to use and where to lay them down. That's pretty cool. Okay, so if you're wondering which colors come in the Van Gogh set, maybe you have the full set and you want to try the Van Gogh palette. I'll hold this still for a second for you so you can see all the colors in this set. Next thing I wanna do with my Van Gogh collection is swatch them. Let's see what colors I was given and how they look on my swatch book. This is my volume one swatch bliss swatching catalog that I have printed on color pencil paper. It will hold 60 swatches per page. So that's a total of 3,600 swatches in this one book. If you're looking for a really handy way to catalog and keep track of all your coloring supplies, come check out the swatching books that we have have here at Coloring Bliss. They're all swatched, so let's take a close look. I didn't brush any crumbs off so that you could see the amount of crumbs coming from the pencils, which some are more crummy than others, but overall, so far, I'm not bugged by the, the crumbs. We'll have to do some more coloring to see what we feel. All the pencils seem to be centered pretty well, and the tips of the, the dipped tips seem to match pretty good. It's not a perfect match, but it's a good approximation so you can grab what you want without having to read the pencils. Um, so that's great. The other thing I really appreciate is even though the, the writing is metallic, which I think should be banned from every product, <laughs> but the lettering is is big so it is easier to read than some other pencils you still have to catch it in the light right but then you can read it really fast so I appreciate that big lettering as far as the overall color palette do I think it's a good standalone set? Can you do like what I did? This is my first um, stepping into this line of Castle Arts pencils and buying this 24 set. Does it give me everything I need? Well, let's see, we've got a yellow, a blue and a couple reds and then we have some browns we have some purples we have two different kinds of blue greens we have a good leaf color a black and a white so yeah it's kind of got a little bit of everything Steve came over to see how they <laughs> colored out um, the colors themselves seem a little bit more on the tertiary side, like they have things mixed into them. Um, there's a few really good, strong, you know, plain yellow, but then they also have given us a yellow orange. They've given us some pretty dynamic colors. I mean, that Indian red is a really interesting color. Oh. Um, yeah. I'm, the two blue-green colors, so you have both ends of that spectrum, is really fun. Yeah, it really is pretty balanced, isn't it? Yeah, pretty good. But the colors are not like true pure, like these two reds. I don't know if they are a straight up really good. That one's pretty good. The vermilion red to match our, this one's got more blue in it, but that one's pretty good. And I wanted to check the blue as well. It's not bad as far as just a small curated 24 set. I think you could do like I did and pick the Van Gogh set and start with just the 24 to see if you like them, especially where they're on sale right now. Did you overhear, Steve? They're on sale for 10 bucks a tin really? on their website right now. Oh, wow. Pretty good deal. So if the, you didn't get them on sale and you're like me and you got them for $20, that means they're still less than a dollar per pencil. Okay. They're not available open stock. Um, and they do, I think, have a total of 120 in the full set of this line. They're Castle Arts um, standard collection. So this is part of that standard 120. Yeah. Okay. So if you do have the 120, like I said, you could pull out the Van Gogh colors and do what I'm going to do right now, which can I color an entire coloring page, this one right here, using only the Van Gogh pencils and only these colors that they gave me. Are you going to try to emulate Starry Night? 
That's kind of cool. That oh, the I guess I could try and... to do a starry night in the background. Yeah. Good suggestion, Steve. <laughs> Did you tell them about the problem we had with shipping and how they fixed it? No, I didn't. I didn't even know we had a problem. Oh, remember how the item was delivered the first time we ordered these? Oh, that's it was delivered. Right. And but it must have gone to one of our neighbors. We don't know yeah. if they hit return to sender or what. Yeah. And so we waited. We checked everywhere. So I contacted Castle Arts. Oh. Obviously, that's not their problem. Yeah, because we ordered it not from their website, but through Amazon. But I actually wanted to see how good their customer service is, ah. you know, because it mm. sucks for them and it sucks for us. You know, it's yeah. not neither of our faults. It nope. just got lost. So I, I reached out to them, and uh, they sent back a, you know, a reply saying, well, have you checked this? Have you checked that? Right. I wrote back and said, yeah, I've, I've even driven to the post office and talked That's to the manager right. there. You went straight to the post office. Yeah. So anyway, after I told them that, they said, okay, we'll send you another one. So well, that's great I thought that was sure. great customer service. And did you contact them via email? Is that what yeah. you did? Cool. All right. Through their website. And they didn't know it was us, did they? Nope. So they just thought we were just regular customer that's awesome to hear. Well done, Castle Arts. Okay, so I'm going to start coloring now and see how this turns out. I'll pop in periodically as we work with it to let you know how I feel about the blendability and the way the colors are laying down and if the crumbs are going to be an issue or not. And I just peeked over at my pencil sharpener. I think it's going to be charged here soon and we can bring him over and put that to the test as well. Okay, let's start coloring. I thought I would check in with you and let you know how things are going. I've been using uh, three different browns to create the first part of my little deer and trying to get some good shading. And then I used the titanium white to try to tint and blend some of it. In the, the titanium white, it's not working really great for that, at least with this color combination. We'll keep trying the titanium white and see if it will work as a blending tool. And my pencil sharpener isn't quite charged yet. I need it. I'm getting some dull pencils. Back to coloring. All right, we're making really good progress here with our drawing. What I'm doing now is using some blue tape to mark off where the edge of the illustration is. And I'm just taking the tape, tapping it up and down on my pants and my shirt to try to knock off some of that adhesive on the back of the tape so it will come off our paper easier when the time comes. Okay. And then I can start working on the clouds next, which I'm going to do similar to how I did his beard using grays to create the shading. All right, back to coloring. Alright, I've been working on this cute little page for a while now and I have several pencils that need sharpening. So I grabbed our new sharpener. So this one's by Office World. You can see that it's still flashing, the light. So I don't think it's fully charged, but it's been on the charger for over an hour. So I want to go for it here. And it looks like to open it to empty it you just pull that out and it says you have to turn it but I don't know if you do oh you do oh I don't know I think it locks in all right 
It'll never be this clean ever again. <laughs> Let's see how it does. Sharpening our first pencil. Down it goes. Um, nothing. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. Let's look at the user manual, shall we? I've read the instructions. And it's interesting. It's different than what the ad said. It says that I can um, sharpen while this is plugged in for charging. That's what the instructions say. And it says I should be able to just stick the pencil in the top and it should start. Um, it has all this explanation about the flashing light, which has stopped now. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, let's give this a, sh a try, shall we? I can feel the button that should be grabbing it. I plugged it back in and the cord is pretty short so it's kind of off frame a little bit but I think we're doing good but I've got it plugged in and it's alive, so that's good. Um, oh, there. <laughs> All right, ooh, look at that. That's a nice sharp point. Okay, let me show you. How else can I show this to you? <laughs> oh, maybe if I lift it up, we'll try that. Okay, so watch the action of what happens here. And then it spits it back up. Did you see that? Wow, that's pretty good. Check it out. That's pretty good. All right. <laughs> I'm going to sharpen a few more and we'll see how this goes. Um, hopefully we can figure out if I can run it without the charging cable in because that was part of why I picked this model was so I wouldn't be tethered, but we'll see. All right, sharpening pencils. I'm going to keep coloring now and keep using the new pencil sharpener and I'll let you know as we go how I feel about it. So far, I'm happy with it, but there are a couple problems, so I don't know. Let's see how it performs. Here we go, pull the tape. This should help too. So I, I'm really hoping that once this white tape, once the blue tape is gone, the blue background's going to look even better. And I really liked having the blue tape on here for all those crazy, strokes I was playing on to the page. I was able to just let those flicks go right off the tape, like you can see here. Oh, tearing the paper just a bit. Not bad though. Oh man, is it looking better with the blue tape gone. So I'm going to try outlining our little deer and our little gnome with some white. I don't know if I'm gonna do it everywhere or just in particular spots, but I wanted to look at it here before I took the risk of doing the white because it's so good right here. All right, so we're gonna use the Dr. Peach Martin's Bleed Proof White and this tiny little brush and wish me luck. Oh, 
that's it. I think I will call Steve up here to come see this with me. So, just a second. Oh, that's really cute. Oh, I like it. I really like it. <laughs> I so, like the starry night you? theme, and yeah. I wanted to know... I tried outlining everything with white because it was getting lost with the background. So right now I'm going to have Steve, let me get my face off of here. The editing Steve will put the before picture here and this is the after we outlined it and added the white snow speckles. So comment below you guys, do you prefer the before the white outline or do you like the after? Of course, at this point in time, I haven't seen the before. <laughs> right, so... But I really like it. You like the white around yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, good. I thought maybe I'd ruined it. No. Um, I... And the speckles, and I really like the clouds, and... Yeah. So... I like it. Yeah. I think it turned out good. It would have been fun to play with, like, Gamzol and smooth out some of the swirls and stuff, but... Yeah, except I was going for Van Gogh, and his stripes oh, yeah, that's are right. not. not. Yeah, and I like the extra colors and stuff you have in there. And Yeah, so and, uh, one thing we need to talk about is these Van Gogh pencils. So if you look at this art here, <laughs> the colors of the yellow, the colors of the blue, if we want to analyze whether this is a good set for Van Gogh, all I have to go off is the tin which this one looks very violet, this one, so you can see, see it's totally two different blues. So who knows if this is accurate or not, but all I have to go off of is the tint. So if we're going to compare Van Gogh's color palette to the colors that Castle Arts gave me, I do have a complaint that these yellows are too orangey. These yellows are much greener that he used here. And they gave me and instructed me to use these very orangey yellows. And the blues aren't quite right either. So as far as... Yeah, but like you said, who knows what they Who were knows what, the, what they were basing it off of. But it did give me enough to complete this. I did notice a couple things I wanted to mention. The, there are no pinks in this set. <laughs> so if you're a pink lover, this Van Gogh well, set... Well, there aren't really any lights in that set except for maybe the right. yellow. So right. they're all mid-tones. Mid-tones and very beautiful colors. I'm not I'm not getting yeah, mad I mean, at the that's colors. that's what you get in 24, right? Yep. So as far as a standalone set, I think it's decent. But if you love pinks, you're going to be mad at this set. So don't buy it as a standalone set. Having said that, look at everything I was able to accomplish. The only products I used in addition to the Van Gogh pencils was the bleed proof white and I did end up using an eraser too to help with lightening some things. So if you want to see the full real-time video of me coloring and working through the things that I wasn't like the my mistake on his nose. If you want to see all of that, um, come on over to, I'll put a link in the video description. Come on over to Coloring Bliss and you can sign up for Bliss Apprentice, which lets you watch these real-time color longs and get the download. So, um, as a set of pencils, I enjoyed it. It's. Uh, I'm impressed with all the different colors yeah. and what you were able to do with it. They blended decently. They blended like you would expect a mid-range hobbyist pencil to blend. There were certain points where I couldn't get more layers on. Um, and so yeah. lots of fillers and stuff. Yeah, but it's a good, decent <clears throat> hobby level set. And I love these Special curated... Special if you can pick it up for 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> these curated sets that keep you in a small area of color. You don't have a lot to choose from. It's kind of fun. A little frustrating, but kind of fun. So I'm looking forward to trying the full new gold set. So make sure you, if you want to see me use those compared to these, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that upcoming video. Now the next product that we need to talk about is the pencil sharpener this guy right here and as you can see I've done a lot of sharpening it says to empty it when it gets at about a third full so we're getting close to needing to empty this out um, I quite enjoy it let me show you how long it takes to sharpen a pencil it says 
three seconds. It's a little longer than that. Let me grab one that needs sharpening, this guy right here. So let's count together. One, two, three, four. So it's about four seconds and you have a beautifully sharpened pencil. It's a little noisy, but that's okay. I mean, it's sharpening a pencil. It's kind of fun the way it sucks it in by itself and then spits it out when it's done. I really like that. Let me sharpen one with the blunt tip now so you can see the difference. We'll do this one right here. Well, that was only two seconds. Okay, so here is what they call the blunt and the sharp. I really don't see much of a difference between the two settings. This does have a bit more of a blunt tip and this one has a bit of a pointier tip. That's all, so. Um, other things about it is it took a long time for the initial charge. Uh, you know, maybe two hours, three hours to get it fully charged so that that little flashing light went away. So that was longer than expected. It does run while it's plugged in. So if I do want to leave it here plugged in and use it, I can do that. Awesome. But me personally, I am so happy about having it be a standalone, no cords attached, battery operated, move it around wherever I want kind of device. That was one of the big things. Time will only tell how long this is going to last. It's a lot of plastic parts in there. Um, so we'll see. I'll do a follow-up if you're interested. Let me know below if you want a follow-up a few months down the road, how it's doing, if it's still going strong or not. I was just sharpening up the pencils to put them away in the tin and we have a broken tip because of this. So let's try again. Okay, it might be that the tip is stuck in there. All right, back to that. Well, that's the only one that broke. And all of those that I sharpened, it did break one tip. <laughs> I'll report back and let you know. So that's my video for you today all about the pencil sharpener going electric and the Castle Arts Van Gogh set. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed it. I think the art that turned out is really sweet and adorable and I could have improved on a lot of things but for the challenge I gave myself and for the look I was going for I think I did pretty good for my first try. It's really fun. I love being inspired by artists like Van Gogh, so I appreciate this kind of setup to give me some more exercise with my artistic skills. So make sure you come and visit the links in the video description. I'll try to link the products and all the accompanying videos and the free downloads. Don't forget I have free downloads for you. So hopefully you'll be able to find something here at Coloring Bliss that inspires you. Thank you for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye, everyone.